What's up, YouTube? On the last episode of Build a Kingdom, we were working on this thing. We found a bunch of rust. And we were working on getting this hood propped where it's supposed to be. Oh, look at that. It is. Let me show you what we did. So I mentioned about putting a little stop down here possibly as an option. So that's what I did. Uh, I had a piece of junk angle iron in the scrap pile, welded it to the nose piece here. <clears throat> And then I riveted in a piece of aluminum here just for some extra strength instead of having just a little bit of fiberglass holding it. So it works good. I mean, I'm pushing on the hood and it's not going nowhere. So that's doing that. Uh, I put the new hood pins in as guide pins here. Like I said, we're going to paint the car, so I just kind of did that to clean up those spots. So boom, little guide pin, get that down. Uh, my latches aren't here yet. I'm not sure where they are. Lost in transit, I suppose. But that's working good. This thing's warped a little from sitting, but once we get the latches on, it'll be good. And we worked on some of that rust repair. So I did this side. Um, this side was actually the worst side. Um, but I'll walk you through doing the other side. We still got some spots to patch with this here. Got a spot to patch here. I actually want to fill all of these holes in. Um, to completely enclose this trunk area. Um, this actually goes into a cavity. We don't want water and crap getting in there, so we're going to patch up all of the holes in this wheel well at some point here, and then we will use that truck bed liner inside this wheel well because nothing sticks to that stuff. So on this episode, a little rust repair. You can see here I took a piece of thin angle iron that I had. I actually had a uh, crate that a go-kart came in for my kids, and inside the crate, it was all built up with this thin wall angle iron. So I kept that, cut it up for scrap. I took this piece of scrap, and I, you can see I kind of pie cut it here. Whoosh, bent it into the shape of what was there before. Recreated this lip. And I took some tin, and I just put it right over top. I didn't try to butt weld it or nothing, because we're never going to put stock fenders back on this. This car is never going to be a show car again. It is a Baja bug. It is for fun. So we just filled in all the holes to keep... Dirt, debris, rust and whatnot out of there. I did spray um, some Rust-Oleum back in there on everything behind that before I put this on. And like I said, after we plug this all up, we will uh, put some uh, truck bed liner on there because nothing sticks to that stuff. So that, the hood stuck, waiting for our latches. But today, we're done here working today. We're going to go pick up our new Enduro car. Because crash is coming, and uh, it's fun on asphalt. So we're going to go do that now. All right, so Connor and I just picked up the Enduro car, and as you can see, it was raining, so I'm all wet. Connor stayed in the truck, so he's pretty dry. Yeah, so uh, uh, you can't quite, you can kind of see it back there. It's a Honda Accord, so let's uh, take a quick look at it before we run in the gas station here and grab snacks. It's still raining out here. We got old blue. Now we got this Honda Accord here that we're going to use for the Enduro. Honda Accord 5-speed. We're going to run inside here and get a snack. We got Old Blue because my avalanche is getting fixed. Uh, radio wasn't working, so my buddy's got it. and We needed to test Old Blue on the trailer anyway, so that's what we're doing. Cool. All right, look at this. Our hood latches came in. I already did the passenger side. So we still got to do this side here, but... I got excited because they came in, so I quickly threw this one on. As you can see, latches it down, pull up, boop, and then we can open the hood, put gas in it. Quick, easy. This might be on backwards. I'm not sure if that stopper goes out or in. I've never used these before, but I'm thinking it'll work better probably if that's out. So I'm going to flip that around. And then we got to do the other one, so... Yeah, I gotta open this hole a little bit. It's a little bit tight on this side here. Plus, I think I might lower this a little bit more. I'm too close. I think I'm gonna lower this a little bit more because it just is only a guide pin. We're not actually putting hood pins in there. Yeah, unless maybe we decide to actually do some off roading, which, yeah, I don't know about that. But so, more like a guide pin. There's the latch, quick and easy. We can open the hood, put gas in it. Um, you can see how I what I did down here. I just notched this out. A little on the back of this fender so uh you can it gets clearance when you undo this to lift this up quick it does open up this ugliness back here a little but 
That's fine. It's fine. All right, moving forward. What's up, YouTube? So uh, at this point, we've got these hood latches mounted here. Bingo, bango. You can probably barely see that around this fender, but we trimmed out the bottom I showed you there in that last little snip. So how we did this. And, uh, now that this one's latched, it almost looks like maybe I didn't trim enough. But anyways, that's latched. I'm not going anywhere. So I've actually moved on to playing with these headlights because honestly, it's more fun than dealing with that rust. Uh, I will get to that because I have to get to that, but I'm not I'm not excited about that. So I'd rather do this. So basically, fancy headlights we got here. I made a little bracket for the back of it. This little thing here. Why did I do it this way? Well, we need to be able to tip the headlight up and down and line it up so that it's pointing down the road because, you know, we don't want it all googly-eyed and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, tip this way. One hole in the top so that we can turn it this way. Get what I'm doing here. And then, in here, I'm actually going to come off the bumper here. Uh, I'll probably just, I've got some one by one square stock left over from race car stuff. I'm probably just going to make a 90. Honestly, I'll come up and in like this and uh, weld it right to the bumper right here. And then this will actually bolt straight up. I'll probably put a bolt through here and weld it to this bracket. And that'll go straight up through the one inch with a nut on top so that we can turn this inside there and tip it up and down if we have to. Uh, I have trimmed this out a little bit from what it was before I opened that up. There's some chunks and whatnot laying here. You can see the ring over there on the floor maybe. But yeah, that's what I'm working on now because it's more fun than rust. And uh, you can see that bracket. I gotta make another bracket for the other headlight. I just whipped up one quick. Uh, basically, a lot of times what you see with these small snippets of video is I get home from work at the end of the day and I just do like a little bit, you know, I'd like spend an hour you know, knocking off something. And uh, that rust is gonna take more than an hour. So that's more of like a weekend thing where I can spend a few hours cutting all that old junk out and putting new stuff in. And I'm pretty much gonna have to do the same thing to this side as I did to the other side. Not as bad, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll just put a flat piece of... No, that's gone. I'm probably gonna have to put a piece of angle in there too, at least in this small section here, but it is what it is. You can see there's fiberglass dust on literally everything from me cutting on this thing here. Uh, I got a little more trimming to do on that headlight bucket, and I might, depending on how this lands, I might have to do some more trimming in here, but like I said, these will be stationary, uh, mounted to the car, not to the front hood, so that, you know, when we swing the hood open, this will actually stay mounted to the bumper. And then, besides those... Stopped at the uh, Harbor Freight and grabbed these bad boys to uh, put on the front bumper. And I haven't even opened this box yet, so let's see what we got here. I don't even know how big they are. They might be ginormous. So. Open up. Open slip me. Well, they're not that bad. About the same size as the headlights, which is good. Oop, shit falling out. Oh, a bunch of wire. Bad boys out of here. Come on. I want to see what the mount looks like. What you, who does that? Seriously? You tie them in with the wires in the back. That's not the most. Yeah, we're not gonna say that out loud. All right, get out of it. Get All right, got one of those out. I want to see what this mount looks like. It is plastic with one bolt through it. All right, easy peasy. So basically we gotta make a bracket to mount this, mount this bad boy. We're gonna mount it right on the front bumper up here. Let me see what our video looks like. Can we actually see the front of the car? We can. Let's turn it a little bit like that. You know what, let's open the hood. hood pins down some because they're catching it. It's annoying. Like that. Damn thing keeps catching on the hood pin. 
I might just take them off because we really don't need them. They're just kind of there for guidance. Okay, so that stops right there. So basically, we have to mount these where the hood's not going to touch them. So we're looking at out here like this. Something like that. We don't want the lights knocking the knocking the paint off the hood. So we're going to have to come out a little bit off the front bumper. Just got to figure out how far in I want it to stick them. But we'll put a piece of angle on here, weld it out, drill a hole through it, put that through it. Bango, bango. Easy peasy. And then my boy DJ can wire these in. We'll have some cool little fog lights on the front that the hood doesn't hit, hopefully. <laughs> it's the plan anyway. So. These are like $30. Cheap, cheap, cheap. But if something happens to the headlights, we can flip a toggle switch, hopefully, and we'll have another set of fog lights. Maybe we'll just hook them up as the brights. I don't know if those have brights. I would assume they do, but I can't be sure. All right. Uh, I also watched some videos. You can't see me. I also watched some videos. And uh, apparently if I take that gas tank out, I have access to everything under here. So we're probably going to have to pull that gas tank out to fix that rust back there. And hopefully I can fix most of this rust without lifting the body off. Hopefully. Not all of it. But hopefully we can fix a lot of it without lifting the body off. Then we got to plug all these holes here to keep stuff from going into here. We don't want to fill this up with nastiness. And we'll have to make a cover for the front of this too that meets the hood to uh, encapsulate this area. We want this sealed off as best as we can get it because that's where all our electronics are. So that's where we're at. That's what we're working on. Slowly but surely moving forward. All right, so I've been like sanding, scuffing, you know, some of this stuff up. I get some scratch putty out and fill in these chips and stuff. And then there was some cracks in the, in the paint, a little bit of rust and stuff up here we hit to clean up. And have to put some kind of treatment on that. It's all pock marks. Just a couple spots there. Not too bad around the windshield, actually. But then on the side of the car, we're gonna have to walk around here. There were some big cracks in the paint, which I assume probably had Bondo of some sort underneath them, but what we're finding is patch panels galore. There was a big crack right here in the paint, so I started taking it away from it. And uh, as you can see, it was yellow before, apparently. But then there is a significant amount of Bondo, and then there appears to be maybe blue. Maybe blue in there. Kind of looks like blue. Then more Bondo, and then yellow again. So a uh, fair amount of Bondo there. Patch panel, patch panel. This one I knew was here. I could tell you by looking at the car there was a patch panel here. But apparently this whole section here must have been patched at some point in time. Or maybe that's how they do it from the factory. I doubt it, but I could be wrong. So we got that spot there, and there was a crack here. And as you can see, that's that same patch panel coming all the way up. There was a crack in the paint here too, so we cleaned it out. But, you know, I had to clean the crack because there was rust underneath it. That's what caused the crack. So we had to take it all the way down get the rust out of there. So now I'm going to have to come back in here with some filler and fill these spots back in. We got a little bit on the other side too. Same thing, patch panel. So fill it in here. Over here, you can kind of see. Maybe it's gray. I don't know. Kind of looks like blue. It was yellow. Then maybe it was white. Filler. And then that might be gray primer before the yellow again. This door is not the original. If you get up here, you can see it was green before it was yellow. So this door was replaced. But we had a little crack here. And as you can see, a whole bunch of Bondo. Maybe it would have been red at one point in time here. It was green and it was red. But I mean, I, why so much Bondo? And like, it's everywhere like that. Like, why is it so thick everywhere? Like, were you guys watching freaking, uh, what was that show that they used to put Bondo on everything? Overhauling? They would like skim coat Bondo on the entire car? I mean, that's what it looks like. There's filler. And it, I mean, it's pretty thick. Like, everywhere. It's everywhere. It wasn't too bad in here. There was cracks all along here. That appears to be pretty thin. It was just paint. Very thin. So, I mean, we'll have to put some scratch putty on that. A little filler here. A little filler back there. But a lot of scratch putty spots. From up here, same thing. There was a crack. 
And I still gotta get in here a little bit more and get some of this out of here. There's still some of the loose paint with the, where the crack was. I gotta get in here with a little sander and get that out of there, but. Yeah, old mirror hole, another mirror hole. I don't know what's going on here. I bought uh, factory replacement mirrors. They're not factory, they're eBay, but they're supposed to go back on where the factory mounting hole is. I'm assuming this was the factory mounting hole and this was something after the thought. I don't know what we're gonna do with these new mirrors that I got. They might not work for what we got here. We might have to fabricate something, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind fabricating stuff, but yeah, we still got some spots we gotta get in here and clean up before we can put paint on it. Looks like we got a big old chunk of rust there too, hiding underneath. Yeah, we're gonna have to get in here and dig a lot of this out, get the sanders and clean a lot of this up before we put paint on the car. I mean, we're just spray painting Rust-Oleum. I mean, we're not getting super fancy with anything here on this car. So it's not that big a deal because we're not doing that, but man, is there a lot of Bondo in this car. A lot of Bondo, a lot of, a lot, yeah. Yep, lots. So, ugh. I guess my ADD kicks in and I just start bouncing all over the place, hitting different stuff here, but the wheels came in and the paint came. So we painted the wheels. It's like a hammer finish gold. Actually, we put down hammer finish chestnut first and then put gold on top of it because the gold itself was a little bit too light. Didn't quite like that. So the, the chestnut underneath, I bought the chestnut first and it was way too dark. I did, like going on the road, it would just look black and that's not really the point. So then I grabbed the gold. I tried putting gold on without the chest and underneath it, and it was like super light, way too gold. And I was like, well, we need to be a little bit darker than that. So we just put the chestnut down first, put the gold over top of it. And then uh, the new tires are here too. I'll get these mounted up today with the new tires. I gotta grab some valve stems. I might have some in the drawer. So that's where we're at. Um, I need to get back to fabricating these headlights. Check this out. We got headlights. Oh yeah. Can't tell me that doesn't look cool as shit. Those are awesome. Those look fantastic. I gotta do a little grinding, I think, on the fiberglass here. Maybe I just got it too tight. Got the bolts too tight on that one, I can't move it. But they're, I mean, visually looking at them, they look like they're pointed fairly straight, and they look freaking cool as shit. They look awesome. I mean, as you just seen, I closed the hood without any problems. Wood pin got caught on me again. I'm just gonna take those out, I think, because Boom! No problem. Let me show what we got here. Ah. Whoop! Just made a quick bracket there. A little 90 up and out. Like I said, bolt through the top. Um, gonna have to come in here. I'll cap all this off. Put caps and stuff on. I gotta do a lot of finish welding. Um, I kind of just got them burned in there pretty good right now. I mean, they're they're in there, but they're not welded 360 degrees all the way around just because I can't really get to it. But this whole front bumper system has to come off and get painted anyway. So this is just mock-up for fabrication purposes. Man, those are cool. That worked exactly like I was planning it. I probably got to do a little bit more trimming here. They're not touching, but uh, depending on how much we have to move them, to get them lined up i might have to trim some more out of here so i might end up just coming in here and trimming most of it right out of the way which will look kind of funky probably but i don't know maybe we'll be a little bit cleaner about it but yeah that worked out slick simple real easy simple so cool so the headlights are on oh and i mounted the tires i'll show you that move all this crap out of my way we mounted the tires up they're outside because I don't have enough room in here. Got them white letters. So yeah, those are all mounted up. Um, we're not even going to worry about those right now because I want to get the... I'm making so much dust and mess and nastiness in here with the Bondo and body work that we got to do. Um, I'm still waiting on the mounts for the rear cage. 
but tomorrow I'll probably drag that in here and clean it all up with the wire wheel. And uh, I got to make some plates to hold these tail lights because they pop into they pop into a little oval hole. Got a little schematic here, show you how to cut the hole out. So we got to make some sheet metal plates for those and weld those into that back bumper cage. And then uh, I actually need to weld a bracket on the cage for the license plate. And I got to, because we're in New York, we got to run a front plate. So I got to weld the bracket on here for the front plate. I got to weld the brackets on here for the fog lights. We'll do that tomorrow. And I actually, somewhere, I have a big piece of uh, stainless tin. And I think I'm going to use that and make like a skid plate on the bottom of this front bumper. So we'll work on that tomorrow if I can find that piece of tin. First, we'll mount the fog lights and the brackets for the uh, license plate on the front and rear. Get those taillights figured out. We're getting closer and closer, and then maybe tomorrow I'll get to this rust here that I don't want to deal with. Maybe we'll mix up some Bondo, too. I don't know. We'll see how tomorrow goes. But that's it for today. Got those fog Got the Man, those are sharp. I'm so excited about these headlights. I couldn't wait till tomorrow. I had to get them on there and see what it looks like. How freaking cool is that? It's so badass. The more I do to this car, the more I love it. I mean, they're out pretty far when you look at it from the side, but that's because the hood needs to be able to open up and not hit them. But I don't care. They look so freaking cool. It's dope. All right, so. I just got done fabricating this back cage section here. I still don't have the mounts to put it on. Apparently stuck in the mail somewhere. They were coming out of California, so it is what it is. But uh, we had to, it was just a blank cage, except for this trailer hitch thing here that was on there. But we had to fabricate the oval piece, put the taillights in, both sides, license plate mount. That little upper piece is for the light for the license plate. Those two big holes are for the reverse lights. So we got that uh, cleaned up and painted after I got done fabricating all the mounts. Got a little license plate light, and then we got these little LED grommet lights that we're gonna use for the reverse lights. So that's what I've been working on today. About that, and I put some filler on the car and those big holes. This is not the right way to do this. Uh, if this was like a nice beetle, like a show car or something, we would have had to strip the body completely down. And it was really, it's thick on this thing for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, I just went back and filled in where the cracks were. Uh, yeah, not the right way to do this. But again, it's a Baja bug. It's for fun. This isn't a show car by any means. We're just having fun with this thing. So I just went back in and filled in the spots where I dug the cracks out on both sides here. Filled that back in. We'll have to come back tomorrow and... Um, sand that down and then on this this stuff here this stuff was just thin so I gotta go get some scratch putty I uh, didn't have any apparently thought I did but I get some scratch putty and we'll go in and get these spots and all these little chips and stuff we'll hit with some scratch putty and I mean we're gonna spray this with spray paint just like I do race cars so we're not getting crazy here just cleaning it up a little bit so it's not really bad you know at least it has somewhat of a smooth clean finish to it but that's where we're at. I gotta take the front bumper off and finish welding all that stuff. And I still gotta put a license plate bracket and some other stuff on the front bumper. But I need another person to help me lift that nose off so I can get to that. But we're moving. Look at that. All painted up. Got that Rust-Oleum rebuild on there. Came out pretty trick. Tail lights are in. Got a license plate light. Little LED reverse bulbs. They were just LED lights that I got at Tractor Supply, but they'll work for reverse. A couple of those, put them right in the tube. Poke the hole all the way through so the wires come out the back. Same thing with this one. Wires right there. Make it easy for my boy to wire up. Look at that. That is slick. That's going to look good on there. All right. Pulled out my resin and fiberglass here. Put a couple of layers of fiberglass on these fenders to repair them. Uh, that's literally, I ran out right there. It's the best I could do. I would like to put more layers on, but really these back parts here, we're gonna put filler on the other side. 
little uh, stir glass on the other side to fill those holes in. That was a crack, same thing, holes. Uh, we sanded a lot of this stir glass down. Could use a little bit more right there. But I need to get some scratch putty to touch up a lot of chips and stuff like that. Um, so we'll just fill these smaller little, you know, divots in. You know, anytime you do this dirt glass, you'll get little pock marks and stuff where air gets trapped in it. So we'll come back, clean those up. Same thing over here. Pretty much all cleaned up. We gotta put some scratch putty in this stuff. That one came out pretty good. Front one there, not too bad. Got a little scratch putty work to do, but other than that, got that done. We got a lot of work done this weekend. We did pretty good. Still got to pull the front bumper and finish welding up everything on that. But, uh, yeah, we made good headway this weekend. And uh, that is going to be it for this episode of Build It Kingdom. Keep it creative and happy building.